We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson. Sunday School is a blessing and gift from God. In this lesson we have the first song recorded in the Bible. It has been aptly called the Song of Moses, and the Song of the Redeemed. Moses and the people he led out of Egypt and across the Red Sea, had something to sing about. God had redeemed them. So Moses taught the people a song describing the mighty works of God, describing how the Lord had triumphed gloriously over the Egyptians. Our lesson begins with verse 11. Which says who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? This verse comes in the middle of a song which Moses taught to Israel after their miraculous escape from Egypt. In his praise, Moses accurately described the Lord. The God whom we should worship is majestic in holiness. The holiness of God stands above all the other perfections of the Lord, it is essential to God's nature, and it should be in our hearts and minds. Apart from holiness he would not be God. The holiness of God displayed itself in awesome, dreadful ways, because they are very terrible to his enemies, and his works so spectacular that they draw everyone's amazement. God is to be worshipped and adored as a being of such infinite perfection that there is none like him, nor any to be compared to him. Verse 12 says, You stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemies. This verse emphasizes God's power. God defeated Israel's enemies when Moses, the man of God stretched out his hand and the waters parted allowing the easy escape of the Israelites. At God's command he stretched it out again and the sea returned to its place, drowning those who pursued the Israelites. Verse 13 says, In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The song continues saying in his mercy, God led the people whom he redeemed from Egyptian bondage. He is the God of power, but he is also a God of tender mercy and compassion upon all who trust and fear him. In Moses' song, God, in a physical sense, delivered Israel from Egypt to bring them into a new way of life. After God redeemed his people from Egyptian bondage, the song goes on to say he guided them in his strength to his holy dwelling, which refers to Canaan, the promised land. The place is referred to as holy dwelling because the Lord would also abide there. Verse 14 says, The nations will hear and tremble, anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The people who presently occupied Canaan will hear about the Lord's power and mighty acts in delivering his people, and they will be afraid. In addition, both physical and mental anguish will take hold of the people in Canaan when they hear of how God delivered his people from Egypt. Verse 15 says, The chiefs of Edom will be terrified, the leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. The leaders of Edom and the mighty men of Moab, upon hearing about God's actions in favor of the Israelites will be dismayed and horrified, and trembling will take hold of them. All the nations that Israel would come in contact with would experience the fear of the Israelites and their mighty God. They will lose courage in the face of Israel's God. Verse 16 says, Terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm they will be as still as a stone until your people pass by Lord, until the people you bought pass by. Israel's song of praise continued saying fear and dread will fall on all the nations in Canaan as they stood by, stupid as stones, not having any spirit or courage left in them. The inhabitants of Canaan will be unable to move until all the Israelites whom God had redeemed passed by and reached the place to which God was leading them. Verse 17 says, You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance the place, Lord you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands established. The people continued to sing their song to the Lord saying that he will bring his people into the promised land and settle them as God's special people in the promised land. The land would become the sanctuary, 
God's indwelling presence, reminding readers that the goal of the Exodus was the worship of God in the Promised Land. Without God's gracious presence, there was no point in going to the land. God plants them in an immovable mountain, as trees of righteousness, where they are always green, fruitful, flourishing, and shall never be hurt by any scorching heat or blasting wind, or be trodden or plucked up. Verse 18 says, The Lord reigns forever and ever. It is fitting that the wondrous works done by the Lord draws the song to a close by declaring that the Lord reigns forever and ever. God's people had now seen the end of Pharaoh's reign, but time itself will not limit Jehovah's reign, for he himself, is eternal and not subject to change. It is the unspeakable comfort of all God's faithful subjects that he not only reigns universally and with an incontestable sovereignty, but that he will reign eternally, and there shall be no end of his dominion. Verse 19 says, When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them, but the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. This verse summarizes how God destroyed the Egyptian army and saved the children of Israel. All of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry raced on dry seabed and were drowned. God's deliverance was so complete that his people didn't even walk in any mud, for they walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. The enemies of God consistently act with arrogance and are blinded of their power. The Lord does not look kindly on those who challenge him or threaten his people. In the end, all God's enemies will experience devastation. Verse 20 says, Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her, with timbrels and dancing. Miriam, elder sister of Moses and one of several women prophetess, took a timbrel in her hand and led the women in musical praise. All the women followed her in an expression of joy as they sang this song. Famous victories were often applauded and celebrated by the daughters of Israel, and so was this one. Our final verse says, Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. In response to all the women following her in playing the music on the timbrels and dancing, Miriam called on the women to praise the Lord in song, because he has triumphed gloriously and is highly exalted. God had triumphed gloriously because the horse and his rider of Pharaoh's army were thrown, drowned, into the sea. Praise with music Throughout biblical history, God has revealed himself to his people by mighty acts. The Jews remembered God for a glorious deliverance from their slavery in Egypt. As a result, Moses and Miriam led the people in a song of triumph and praise to the Lord. When we think of all the marvelous things God has done, is doing and will do for us, we should do as the psalmist declared, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, his right hand, and his holy arm, hath gotten him the victory. Psalms 98 1. But even more significantly than his wonderful acts, God has provided eternal life for his people. Christians must always remember that God gave his son to pay the redemption price for our sins, and that he raised him up again. Knowing that, deserves a song of praise. Praise with music. 1. The believer who gives God his rightful place will experience the glory and mystery of God's actions, Exodus 15:11. They praised God for his superiority to all other gods and by implication his superiority to everything else. 2. God's power and sacrifice produced redemption and it becomes personal by faith in Jesus Christ, Exodus 15:12-13. God chose to show his mercy to save them from the enemy. Once he saved them he didn't desert them. He continued to lead them. 3. When unbelievers hear about God's vengeance against his enemies, they become afraid and fear overtakes them, Exodus 15 14-16. 
the Egyptians couldn't move because of their fear. They heard what God had done. They knew he was the true God and their gods were nothing. 4. God keeps all of his promises to his people, Exodus 15:17. This should give us even more motivation to serve God. Romans 12:1-2 says, we should be living sacrifices to God. Give our lives to him in response to all that he has done for us. 5. God's reign over creation will never end, Exodus 15:18. Cruel and tyrannical princes, such as Pharaoh, are limited to a certain time, but the song of Moses and the Lamb will be sung because Christ's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is evermore. 6. God will bless his people, but he will destroy his enemies, Exodus 15:19. What happened to the Egyptians is a very wonderful thing, and is sufficient reason for thanking the Lord. 7. Because of his glorious acts, the Lord deserves to be praised, even with musical instruments and dancing, Exodus 15 20-21. Music and dancing has a way of piercing into the deep parts of our soul, that assists in our expression and response to God. Singing helps unites us to the church. The gospel unites believers to one another. We are truly glad you spent time to learn this lesson with us. We hope you are blessed and may share these with somebody else. Thank you very much, have a great week, and God bless you always, dear brothers and sisters.